previously on the Dragon Prince. Callum went to the dark side. Who are you? I'm the beautiful elf wizard. How may I serve you? How may I serve you? Interesting. Chapter 8, The Book of Destiny. We could be in Zadia in just a few hours. He's really beat up. Yeah, Soren got really banged up last episode. I could see that being a big deal for him, right? Because he's this guy who's never afraid. He thinks he can handle any challenge. He sees himself as someone who can slay dragons and he just got wrecked. And I feel like that can go one of two ways. Like one, he can learn some humility and like reflect on his own life. Or two, he could become bitter and he could like be more vengeful and hate dragons, let's say. I can't help but wonder if they're foreshadowing that Soren is going to kill a dragon because they set up that that's a childhood dream of his and he just came head to head with a dragon and got defeated. And I doubt that'll be the last time that he has this kind of confrontation. I don't feel anything. Oh no. And the last step has just a tad of grasshopper goop. Oh, do we really have to... In the mouth, huh? A little salt. Fancy. Salt him up. Well, that was super pretty, but I still can't move. I'm getting really worried. Help me get him back to town. We need to find a doctor. You know things are bad when they're not using magic for everything. So uncomfortable. I'm so uncomfortable. So uncomfortable. Right, the keys. No! What is happening? Who was that? Be ready for anything. Do not underestimate him. Varen just tapped into a new source of power, though. Where are you? I don't know. Don't lie to me. I'm not lying. I never lie. I need your name. Erevos. Right, it is. It is him. Who are you? Who, who are you? It's not Dark Callum, is it? My name is Corvus. Your Aunt Amaya sent me. I am here to serve the king. Nice. Corvus joins the battle. King Ezra. Oh, he doesn't know. No, no, no. That's how he's going to find out? Damn. Well, how long will it take for him to get better? He's not going to get better, <gasps> but he's never going to walk again. <gasps> no. That's kind of huge. No. No, no, no. Ezrin, it's gonna be okay. You knew? <gasps> Callum, does he know yet? He knows. He's dealing with a lot. He's dealing with the death of his father and betrayal of his brother and friend. It's pretty packed emotional two scenes. What does that mean for Soren? That's crazy. That changes everything. I guess I was way off about fighting dragons, at least anytime soon. Damn, they've been setting this up. They've been setting up how he's all about punching and he's all about physical strength and his ability, and he's fearless. This is a major turning point for Soren. And then Ezrin finding out he's king. I did not expect it to happen like that. That came out of nowhere. Time to do some homework on Erevos, I guess. Maybe the dragon king was guarding him. Maybe it's like the coin, where he's stuck in the mirror. It is Dark Callum! Callum, don't be frightened. You know why I had that feeling? It's because I know how much the writer loves Star Wars. But that's the thing. It was easy. Too easy. Even though I know it's wrong. You can have unlimited power. You can make a real difference in the world. All you need to do now is accept it. Your destiny is already written. Nice. <laughs> I like this confident 
Dark Callum. That's part of the fun of like the, the dark version of characters, right? It's like, this is a potential thing, a potential path that could go down. And it's easy to tap into that feeling because there are dark versions of ourselves that we could sort of see. And it's always, always, always something that's appealing or seductive. It's always a desire that you have. And it's like, well, how bad could it really be? You know, but then once you get into it, you start sliding down that path. You realize how terrible it is. You realize the costs, but then it's harder to go back because you're, you're so far entrenched in this path. That's one thing Callum said, right? He said, it's so easy, even though he knows it's wrong. That's kind of how it goes. And I think that's part of what splits the the path between like heroic figure and tragic figure, how you can overcome that, or do you just kind of let yourself sink into that, into like the worst state that you could be? I already know. What? I can't move. I can't walk, and it's not going to get better. <laughs> wow. I didn't want to do it, but I do want dad to love me and be proud of me. Kill the princess. No, no, that can't be right. Now I can't do anything terrible because now I can't do anything. Whoa. That's a huge deal for both of them. Even though this is tragic for Soren, it is forcing him to look at things, right? And think about things. It hurts to watch Soren like this. For him to take that as relief, I mean, that hurts. But it's humanizing to see how conflicted he was about the whole thing. And this is a huge turning point for Claudia, too, because she also has a lot of faith in her father's vision. Maybe not as blindly as Soren, but that obviously crosses a key line for her. My only hope for this is that it brings them closer together, because now they're, you're, they're united in, in some way. At least half of the secrets have come out, and Claudia knows more than Soren knows, but now she realizes that Virion was sort of playing two things at the same time with his children. Callum, you are free. Right. No! I get to choose who I want to be. That was horrifying. It's your dream, kid. <laughs> Thanks, Harrow. Last episode, I said he was going to be dealing with it. I didn't know it was going to be this awesome sequence. I thought he was going to talk it out, <laughs> cry a little bit. <laughs> but no, that was really cool. I'm free to do what I want with no expectations from Dad. What are you going to do with this newfound freedom? Now, I've been thinking about that for the last 10 minutes. And I've decided I'm going to reinvent myself. Nice. I'm going to be a poet, Claudia. Oh, not that. I Try again. I already have my first poem. It's a haiku. Just uh, tell me when you're ready. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> I was born ready <laughs> for soaring haikus. Dragon Smash Boy, say the good words now. They light the hearts of other people. I don't think that's a haiku. <laughs> no, that was a terrible poem and it, it, it's not even a haiku. <laughs> there has to be something. Is this a critique on modern medicine? <laughs> I'm loving this dream sequence, it just keeps going. Am I be needing a boat? You am! For your voyage! Into your own heart! I... I'm here for this. Let's hope the weather be nice then. You're voyaging into your own heart, the weather's not gonna be nice. That's tough. Good luck to you. Love this music. I have questions! We all have questions. <laughs> You're making this easy for me, young king. That's what you think. He has a lot of practice with hide and seek. What's going on? Every time I found a mention of you in a- You gotta put the thing in your ear. Yeah. <laughs> Why should I trust you? You shouldn't. Yeah. Right, he doesn't lie. His footprints are replaced by banther tracks. The king's been eaten by a banther! He's probably riding it, knowing Ezrin. So if there are banther tracks, it means Ezrin caught a ride on the banther, not in the banther. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect reaction. The see your coming mantra. There is no synonym for cinnamon. 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 There is no... That is kind of relaxing. Hi, Claudia. Help! Help! You'll get through this. It's like he's going through withdrawal or something. Your conscience is a messy place, boy -o. Get on, help! Callum! 
Don't give up, Helen. No! Again, they keep getting me with this. Journeying into the heart, an accurate representation. That dream sequence was just a gift that kept on giving. This was one of the craziest episodes I can think of. So much of the story just came to a head, right? Like, Ezrin found out the truth. Sorin, like, is one of the most devastating parts of it, not being able to walk again. I don't know if it's a permanent thing, but there's no doubt that that's gonna change things radically. Like, I don't even know what to think about Sorin anymore in terms of where he's going. It's not gonna be haikus. You have Callum grappling with himself and who he wants to be. And like, he doesn't have the cleanest conscience. He does feel lost. And it's not just the magic thing. It's just his self-worth and like who he is and what he wants to be and what kind of future he wants. He's very much a kid emerging into this dark space of like, who am I? It's kind of chilling to watch. It's a little bit terrifying. I think they do a great job depicting the danger for him. Another interesting thing to come out of this episode that I didn't expect is Ezrin and Claudia now seem to be setting up to have some kind of interaction. Claudia has been searching for Ezrin, but now she also has had an awakening Awakening, realizing that Virian is not maybe everything she thought he was and her concern for her brother is sort of winning out it's a wake-up call for her and her own value so now meeting Ezrin is very interesting because who is she going to be in this situation I don't know I feel like my predictions and feelings about the trajectory of the show have sort of been thrown through a loop because this was such a radically different tone than anything we've seen before I think this was a very like very dark introspective episode for a bunch of characters which is a good thing because it's exciting I want to see them grapple with these things and I want to see them emerge victorious I want to see them become better oh and I forgot to mention this whole Viren and Erevos thing is ramping up too. I feel like that is going to even change like the trajectory of the, the villainy in a way. So far it's been about the kingdom, right? It's been about fighting against elves, but Viren has this door he's just opened as well to what seems like incredible power. So it's all great stuff. We got one episode left of season two. Can't wait to see how it goes down. So see you next time for the season two finale.